Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Mattel Ghostbusters Courtroom Battle Ray Stance. So we seem to be coming to the end of Mattel's Ghostbusters action figure line. And to complete what was already started with Courtroom Peter, we now have the Courtroom Battle version of Ray Stance. Ray comes in the same style Ghostbusters blister card packaging, featuring both the Terror Dogs on the blister on the front and Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in the back. However, you will notice that this one has the Ghostbusters 2 logo up at the top. The back of the package has the standard messy desk motif, with a personnel file for Ray Stance. Alright, so let's take a look at this action figure outside of the packaging. Now, if you've been a longtime collector of Mattel's Ghostbusters figure line, you already know exactly what you're getting with this Ray figure here. He utilizes the exact same suit body that was on the Peter Venkman figure, complete with the proton pack attached to his back. And the head sculpt is the same Ray stance head sculpt we've seen for all of the other versions of Ray in this line. It's not necessarily the best likeness of Dan Aykroyd, I felt that way throughout the entire line, but not too terrible, and again, it's the same one we've gotten on all of the other figures, so I suppose we'd be used to it by now. Now like I said, the suit that he's wearing and the body type underneath is exactly the same as the one we saw used on that Peter Venkman figure, however the colors are a little bit different on this. The shirt he's wearing underneath his jacket is a bright blue, and on top of that he has a red and black striped tie. And then the jacket he's wearing over it is kind of a grayish brown in color, while his pants and shoes are black. The proton pack is permanently attached to the figure, it's non-removable, but that's just like we've seen with all of the other Ghostbusters figures so far. And it is the same proton pack sculpt, which is still really nice with the bright and colorful wires all over the back of it. The proton gun does have the ability to attach to the back of that proton pack there on the side, and of course can be removed and held in Ray's hands. It's made of the same soft plastic as the cable that's holding it to the proton pack, so it is flexible and a bit gummy. But he can hold it in his hands, and you can do some cool two-handed poses with it, and it can be held either way. The cable is long enough that it doesn't really get in the way, and it's not too tight. So you should be able to get some pretty good stances with him holding the proton pack ready to fire. Now the accessory that comes with this Ray figure is definitely going to be the selling point of this figure, in my opinion. That being the second of the Scolari brothers... Tony Scolari. Now the courtroom Peter figure gave us Nunzio Scolari, so now we can finally complete that duo with this new ghost. He's got a really cool sculpt. He's much skinnier, of course, than Nunzio, who is the fatter brother. This one's the taller, skinnier one. He's got a very cool skeletal look going on, where you can see the rib cage there sticking out from underneath his cool shirt. He's got a very long, cartoony-looking face with some bright yellow eyes and pink gums on his teeth there and his tongue showing, and he's got some dark brown hair, and he's got the really cool touch of the electric chair uh, halo around his head with little translucent light bulbs of sorts kind of sticking out all the way around that little halo. Now one thing I will say about the color is he is a much brighter blue on this figure, and he's got a little bit of a black wash there to bring out the details. The Nunzio was much more transparent than this figure is. Uh, this is still transparent, but when you look at him side by side, you'll notice that the colors on Tony here is much brighter than the pale blue used on Nunzio. Now as far as the articulation on this guy goes, the head is able to turn both left and right. The arms just have the standard up and down movement. He does have swivels at the elbows right above the regular elbow joint, and then the standard elbow bend underneath that. His wrists are able to swivel, but then there's no other articulation in the body underneath that. So no waist, no legs, no feet, nothing. And the feet are not removable on this figure like they were with Nunzio, so you can't interchange them into like a flying pose. He does have figure stands on the bottom of his feet, but otherwise he's just going to stand there normal. It's interesting how his upper body has a good amount of articulation, but his lower body has nothing. So, very limited on the poses you can get with this guy. 
I do kind of feel that, like with Nunzio, I wish he had a flying stand or something so we can actually position both of the ghosts hovering up in the air instead of just standing on the ground. But I will still say he's a really nice addition to this figure, and you're definitely going to want him if you've already got Nunzio so you can complete your Scolari Brothers scene. So there you go, guys. There's a look at the brand new courtroom battle ray stance and Tony Scolari. This is the final Ghostbusters SKU for 2012, and since we don't know anything of what Mattel's doing with the line yet in the future, this very well could be the last figure in the Ghostbusters line. This will be available on MattyCollector.com in November 2012. Until next time... <laughs>